you know, one of the famous idioms here in the Philippines is no man is an island. And uh, reference that, you know, alone, uh, we can do only so much. But if we're surrounded with like-minded people, we can accomplish so much more. And in our fellowship, and you know, in our walk, if you're always, if you're always founded in the word, and that is supported by your brothers and sisters, that is also founded in the word of the Lord, then you'll never be lost. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, I talk. Yeah. Can I? Uh, yeah. By the way, I'm very sorry because I just only noticed it now that in the slides that I prepared here, it was in New King James Version. So by all means, please use your own Bible and uh, read it in King James Version. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so the title of my talk, Stop, Look, and Listen. Um, so it's, uh, I was trying to think of what I can give for the talk and I was passing by this street, a very, a very busy street, and it had a sign that says, stop, look, and listen. Next slide. Yeah, so uh, what does the sign itself mean? You know, the sign, stop, uh, listen, and look mean. So basically it is, it is on a busy street, right? It, you, you usually see it on a, on, a, on a busy street, lots of cars going around, or maybe even a railroad, but uh, it's not for the cars, but it's for the people that is going to pass the street from one side to the other side. And uh, they are encouraged to be careful, and so the sign. And uh, what does the sign mean in biblical sense? You know, in life, we are facing many challenges, especially in our walk with Jesus Christ, our Lord. For the world that we live in is very wicked, full of things that can blind us in our spiritual walk. You know, the, the prince of this world is the devil himself. And he'll try to throw at us many, many things, you know, to confuse us in our walk, makes us feel weak. But the Lord is there. The word of the Lord is there. And so for this instance, like I said, I've forgot to put or change it to King James Version, but for this instance, I'll use it. Uh, for nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So, you know, brothers and sisters in the word, in the Bible, it, we are given a warning what it's like to live in the last days and so you know just like what we have read you know nation against nations we see all the wars that is happening around us uh not to mention you know uh pretty much everywhere there is war brewing and uh kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places and uh you know if we saw what happened to, you know, the place of Brother David and a sister Rhea, uh, you know, calamities like that happen. But, you know, pretty much everywhere in the world now, there is so much calamities and there is so much earthquakes that happens. And uh, famines, pestilences, of course, the sickness, you know, these are the signal of the last days, of course, one of the signal, one of the prophecies. And it's all for us. It's all for us. It's meant for us so that we would be prepared, so that we would not be slack, so that we would do our part, so that we would go out there and preach the word of the Lord. It's not a warning just for us, but pretty much for everyone. And so, you know, the Lord has given us his spirit. The Lord has given us his Holy Spirit. So we are emboldened by his word. We are emboldened by his spirit. So we should go out there and preach the word of the Lord. For like what we have read, signs of times are, are now, and uh, we should 
we should go out there and do our part. Next slide. We need to stop and think. So this is, you know, this is one of the things that why I highlight the stop as for the sign. And uh, in Isaiah chapter one, verse 16 says, wash yourself, make yourself clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes and cease to do evil. So it's just, you know, a piece of, uh, of scripture that I've taken from the book of Isaiah, but it's very powerful because as God is talking to his people here, you know, he, he was saying to them, stop or put away or cease to do evil basically and because you know the israelites back then were very sinful even though that the lord has saved them from egypt that they were very stubborn people that they still pushed their ways in the face of the lord and the lord has pleaded unto them to stop their ways to stop their sinning because even though that uh you know that, that the Lord has done pretty much many things for them that these people the Israelites back then took it for granted and so you know for us my sisters it's, it's a warning it's an example for us to not do the same to not do the same and pretty much to do not let ourselves be fooled by this world and in, um yeah, sorry, I forgot. What was that? Why is there two books anyway? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna check it. Hold on. I think there was a mistake on my part. So in Romans chapter twelve, verse twenty-one. <clears throat> so be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good and uh and first oh so uh in, in this i made a connection of two scriptures and in first corinthians uh first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 but overcome evil with good no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man but god is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So the Bible is saying here that, you know, God will, will not give us a test. God will, God will not give us a, uh, you know, a tribulation that we cannot handle. Rather, you know, because we have the spirit of God and because we are born again by his blood, you know, we can handle all things if we trust the Lord. If we look unto the Lord, you know, if we, uh, you know, if we ourselves um, at the moment is, you know, not at the, not in sync with the Lord, then we need to stop whatever it is that we are following and start to follow God himself, right? Next slide. We need to look for God's wisdom. So in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, says, you will seek me and find me and may you search for me with, with all your heart. And also in First Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2, says, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. And in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, says, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So in here, brothers and sisters, I've, I have, I've highlighted all the keywords that I've put in, where is search and seek. And for us, brothers and sisters, even though that, you know, we are now been saved, we are now been given this wonderful chance of salvation by the Lord, we still need to continue searching the Lord. We still need to continue searching for his word. Because if we stop searching for the word of the Lord, that we could be, you know, we could be drowned by the sins of this world. We are not yet, you know, in the promised land. You know, we are not yet, you know, Jesus Christ hasn't returned yet. And so for us, brothers and sisters, we are still living in this world. 
And so there is a great danger if we become ignorant of the word of the Lord. So we must continue to, to search for the word of the Lord. For as we continue to search for the Lord, we continue to grow. We become stronger in our walk. We become, you know, more, um, we become more strong in our foundations in our faith because we continue to search for the Lord because we are not being ignorant by the, his word. And uh, next slide. And we need to listen to God's instruction. In James chapter one, verse 22 says, do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourselves and do what it says. If you read it in King James version actually says, do not be hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word. Actually, that's why I recommend King James Version. Um, I don't know why I put it in New King James Version. Sorry about that. But anyway, my point is, you know, uh, the, the Bible is warning us here to not be hearers of the word only, but rather being doers of the word. There's a great difference between hearers and doers, you know. Hearers is just you hear the word, but you not you don't you don't you don't do an, you put you don't you don't put an action after it. But being doers of the word, it's not only by hearing, but by actions we demonstrate, we you know we we show forth what is it like to become a servant of the Lord, which is also a testament to the Lord and the great works that he's done himself in our lives. And uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, therefore everyone who hears this word is of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So the Bible is saying here, very much if we have, you know, if we have heard the word of the Lord and have put an action into it, that we have, it's like having our house founded upon a rock. We do know that the rock symbolizes Jesus Christ. And if we have founded ourselves upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ, whatever strong winds that may come into our life, whatever disasters, whatever um, temptations, tribulations, and tests that may come into our lives, we will not falter. Why? Because we are strong because Jesus Christ is our foundation, not because our foundation is our, is our own self, but rather because Jesus Christ is, you know, the one that gives us the strength to do not be conformed in this world, do not be conformed in this untoward generation, but rather let us continue to be conformed with the word of the Lord. And the uh, yeah, so whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me in Philippians chapter 4 verse 9, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So, you know, again, the Bible is encouraging us to, you know, like in a stoplight, do not just stop or do not be just observant. Do not be, uh, you know, do not be a man who just hearing but not doing but rather step out and uh, put forth your 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 feet and go whatever it is that the lord wants us to go right next slide trust the lord all the way until he returns and after passing through the sign and having the green light we should never look back or dwell in the past since for the lord has forgiven us in all our trespasses and just focus on being the right with the Lord. And second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So in here, God is saying to us, you know, we are still man. And sometimes we will stumble but the Lord is reminding us to do not condemn ourselves and do not look back. Do not be, uh, do not focus on the sin, but rather focus 
on healing what the lord can provide to heal our land to heal us you know and um and of, of course as well in in luke chapter 6 verse 37 do not judge and you will not be judged do not condemn and you will not be condemned forgive and you will be forgiven sometimes one of the things that people tend to forget is why we are here is because God has forgiven us in the first place. So we don't have the right to not forgive any of our brothers and sisters when they trespass into us, let alone ourselves when we trespass. Because God is a merciful God. And as long as our heart is in the right place, as long as we want to follow the word of the Lord, as long as we want to pray in his language, in spirit, and sincerely ask forgiveness from the Lord, then he forgives us, then he heals us from our sins, right? Next slide. Okay, so uh, I can't read what is in the top. Let's move on holding each other up and God's hand. There you go. Uh, in Psalms 121 verse 7 to 8, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. And the Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, for we live by faith and not by sight. So, you know, for us, brothers and sisters, this is a scripture that not only warns us but encourages us to step out on our faith basically and not just you know continue to cross and cross and cross but rather before we cross or before we make a important decision in our life you know we must follow what the Lord says we must put the words of the Lord first in our lives and all blessings will follow. If we, um, if we try to make a decision by our own selves, by our own wisdom, by our own uh, understanding, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you that we are, bound, we are bound to fail if we follow by our own understanding. It's very, very, uh, it's a very, very clear instruction in the Bible where it says, in the book of Psalms where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your minds. Lean not in our own understanding because the Lord knows our hearts or men's hearts are naturally wicked. But if we follow the righteousness of the, of the Lord, then we could be we could prevent uh, stumble, stumbling in our walk. We can prevent all the unnecessary things, you know, that could have been avoided because the Lord has guided us into the right place. And uh, that's my talk for today. Thank you very much. I don't know what happened to the icon.